Good morning Carpologists, I'm Dan and you've joined me on the banks of a syndicate water in Essex and I'm joined by Mark Wilcox. So Mark, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about the venue or, or why you're here and because I understand this is not normally the type of place that you fish or have fished in the past but what is it that brings yeah. you here? Well most of my fishing is normally on sort of big pits, um, low stock and last year through sort of uh, work commitments I basically didn't fish for about four or five months from April till mid-September yeah and I didn't have a sort of um, local water close to hunt yeah so this is a sort of localish water um, managed to get a ticket for it so if I've not got a lot of time it's obviously ideal because I'm not yeah. traveling miles and yeah. miles and miles which you know I can't always do so you know this basically um, sort of Feels helps me go gap. fishing yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know uh, quite a nice little well it's not big um, but there's a decent stock of fish in here I mean there's probably there's a hundred plus fish um, there's around 40 plus 30s. That's crazy, really. Yeah, you know, for a the size third, of the lake. A third of the stock yeah. is, is 30 pound plus. Yeah, so, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a decent local ticket to have. Um, lucky to get in here, you know, it just fills a void when I haven't got time to travel, basically. Yeah. So how much sort of time have you done on here and, and sort of what have you caught really? I've probably, I've done, this is my fifth session since the um, start of September. Yep. I was fishing the Kent Syndicate prior to that and I was doing the odd night over here probably in July. So mm. I've probably fished it eight or nine times. Yeah. Um, I've had around 50 fish in that period Yeah. with probably 10 or more 30s out of that. Yeah. And that's what sort of stock it's incredible, up to, really. Up to 36 pounds, so. Well, about half past six now, I guess. Yeah, just gone. And there's not a lot to report, really, is there? It's been a really, really slow day. Not really a lot of quiet. activity at all. So, what sort of, uh, what's your plan going forward? What have you done today? And what are you likely to do for this evening or, or tomorrow morning? Uh, this morning, obviously, when we was filming, one showed off the island uh, yeah. twice, quite tight. So uh, I bought in the left down rod and stuck a single pop up out there. I managed to nick a couple of fish last week doing that. Yeah. Um, that obviously hasn't paid off. Um, so I pulled the rods back onto the original spots I've been catching from at night. Yeah. I don't think the fish have been really getting on the bait. We've seen the birds pick it now, pick a bit of bait up, etc. Yeah, they've dived down and picked off yeah. the odd bit. So all I've done is just topped it up a little bit, a few spots around each. And uh, you know, all we can do is see what tonight brings. You know, I mean the lake really has kind of shut up shop really. It has, yeah. Yeah, it's done, you know, there was one fish out last night, there was quite a few anglers on, quite a few lines out. Um, you know, it done one fish yesterday which I caught, one last night, and everyone else is basically blanked. You know, we've had a a few liners, uh, so there are fish moving around. Just but nothing like previous weeks. No. Well, it's the last morning. Uh, not a lot to report from last night. Yeah, there weren't much moving about. Um, normally you get a lot of liners obviously on here because you know, of sort of stock. I mean, that's not to say that um, it couldn't just change again you know overnight yeah i mean you know i've just moved two rods off the bait because obviously the birds have been going down on not only my bait but other people's bait Every, everyone's yeah. yeah you know they're not been really getting on bait so i've just moved to singles one to the island there's a plateau out there probably two and a half three foot i've like a bright sort of high sort of pop up out there you know just in the hope of nicking a sort of last minute bite yeah um apart from that i don't think there's anything else you can do to be honest Dan. no no that's it and uh obviously judging by the success that you've had on there this year you know that yeah. your approach and the yeah. bait you're using and the tactics and everything is, is more than right because you've caught a lot more than anyone else. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're not fishing not a lot for of one time. fish, yeah. You know, I'm sort of, you know, I'm fishing for sort of um, multiple captures. Yeah. You know, I think this swim alone, obviously this session's been really slow, I've just managed to nick the one. Yeah. But I think in the last four sessions I've had 24, 25 fish. Yeah, that's it. Um, so there's absolutely no doubt in your mind, no. you're not one of them people that's sitting there worrying about rigs or no. bait because you know yeah, I mean, without a doubt yeah. it works 100 yeah, I mean rigs I'm not really into rigs you know I'm not really technical that way yeah. never have been I use the same sort of rigs that I've used 
since the eighties, albeit the sort of components have changed. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, I'm not a sort of rig person. I no. don't believe if I change a rig, I'm going to catch a fish. To no, me, no. if it's I'm on fish, I've got fish feeding in an area. Yeah. Then I'm going to catch him as long as the rig's half tidy. I think I remember John Apart telling from, me you've had like eighty or ninety fish this season. I've on. now had ninety-seven on the on the mulberries and Jesus three on the black seal wafters, yeah. and I think talking to Sean the other day. They've only been out since April. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, and um, the Kent Lake is nothing like this. You know, they're like no, chalk and cheese. Yeah. You, know, you really work for your fish over there. Um, you know, some people can go four or five years without a fish. Yeah. Really weedy. Um, absolutely full of zebras. Yeah. Um, therefore, you know, like you're getting cut off a lot of the time. Yeah. Nothing you can do about it. You know, but the bait I've been using over there, obviously Sean and John's bait, um, I think it's really contributed to the amount of action that I've had this year. Obviously not a lot of guys, or some of the guys watching this, won't have heard your name before or no. seen your face. No. But um, the guys that do know, you know that you've caught a lot of the trophy fish in the country, um, but have just never shown them. Is there any mm. particular reason why? I've always kept myself to myself, fish for myself. Um, I will see a particular fish, you know, that I like, it hasn't got to be the biggest fish in the lake, I just fish for looks. If I see a fish that looks nice, that's what I'll go for. Yeah. And that's all about looks for me, not about weights. How would you describe the sort of fishing that you like doing? I like sort of big, um, low stock pits with obviously nice looking fish. Um, prime example would be a place I, a stick of place I fished, um, Fendrayton. Very few anglers on there. Sometimes you have to place it yourself. Uh, now you'd find an area where you sort of, you know, you thought would do a few bites, you'd bait it, catch one or two, and then sort of build on that, you know, and that's how you sort of caught the fish, you know. Um, that's my style of fishing on a lot of pits. What would you say is the secret to your success? Obviously apart from time, um, accuracy I think is a big part of it. Um, a lot of angles you see, they'll cast and it'll be, that will do its near. I like to be bang on the spot that I think will produce a bite, not near it, because to me that's not good enough. So if I have to do 10 casts to get it there, that's what I do. Once it's on that spot, then I know I'm fishing as, as sort of effectively as I possibly can be, you know. Are there any venues that have really beat you up and you've struggled to, uh, to uh, unlock the code as such? I would say probably the hardest pit I fished was uh, Johnson's Railway, obviously in Kent. Um, but that's back in the day when you still had the old close season. Um, real, real difficult lake, didn't do many bites. You'd had, you had probably three, four, three or four full-time anglers on there when I fished it. Um, and that would, go, that would go two months without a bite. Now that was tough, but that was tough because of the nature of the lake. Um, I did fish another pit in the Cone Valley, a place called Pit Free, and I went on there with a the parkour approach. Um, after coming off the North Met, I'd done quite well on there. Same tactics on Pit Free, and it just beat me up. Caught a few fish, but not what I should have caught. And it took me a year to kind of realise that the method that I wanted to use wasn't the method to use. So I was the same approach, as I always do, spod but with boilies, and it completely turned it around. Right. And that went from a bad year to the next year was exceptional. Yeah. So that, that kind of beat me up a bit on the first year, yeah. Do you find targeting the whole certain fish thing stressful? No, not at all. Um, the way I sort of approach it is I'll go into a lake and I'll fish for as many bites as possible on a sort of premises that the more I catch, the more chance I've got of catching the fish that I want. So no, I don't get stressed at all. What about unknown whackers? Do they exist? 100%. Um, I know of fish that people are fishing for now, friends. Uh, they're not on a sort of known list. I've also fished for and caught fish myself that um, no, big fish that I've seen in pits that were sort of uh, overlooked fish with them, caught them, so yeah, they exist.